Hey, what's up? This is Scott with the Level Up Tuts, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, nesting in SAS in your third SAS tutorial. And last time we talked about variables, and uh, so we're going to pick up right where we left off. Um, I'm not going to show you how to start up SAS because I'm just leaving it running. And uh, basically, um, if you need to know how to start SAS, you can refer to the previous uh, SAS variables tutorial or the installing SAS tutorial uh, to show you how to start that up. So I didn't do too much to change this document. You can see I still have our variables up here. Um, the only thing I did is I added this uh, second h2 tag that's within the uh, this uh, uh, grad div here. And then uh, I added a class of pair1 to the first paragraph. And then I added an anchor tag in here as well. Um, so what I'm going to show you is how you can nest um, styles to save you some time writing code. So typically, if you were going to style this anchor tag specifically, uh, let's say you only want to style this one and have it not uh, be affected uh, by the stylings that are for any of the other anchor tags are not affected in the other ones, you would uh, typically have to do some sort of, oh, okay, you know, it's in, it's in class, you know, paragraph one, and then it's um, an anchor tag within that. Or if you want to get more specific, you can say it's in, um, grad and then it's in pair one and then it's the anchor tag um, and so what happens is you end up writing um, let's say you want to style um, you know grad you have your styles for grad and then you want to style specifically pair one inside of grad you'd have to do grad pair one all right and then your styles and then you'd have to do um, to access that anchor tag specifically grad pair one anchor so um you know this is you know it's fine if this is how we've been writing css for a long time um, but it can be a lot faster with uh with sass so since we want to do it inside of grad one all we have to do is put it inside of grad one so you see your uh inside of your right bracket here we're going to tab over um, just like where you'd put your css properties normally you would say uh, pair one, and then your brackets, and I'll hit enter here. Um, and what you can see is uh, what happens here is that SAS is going to now know that because this pair one is inside of grad, that it's um, uh, going to um, automatically convert that in your CSS for you to what we had just typed previously. And even uh, let's go one deeper, and we want to do the anchor tags inside of pair one. We can do it here. So let's say we want to make this. Um, font size, you know, 20 pixels um, for some reason. We'd save that, and if you'll notice, only this anchor tag within this paragraph has um, 20 pixels. And even though we're only calling anchor, there's nothing every there's nothing before it like before. It knows that it's grad pair anchor. Um, you know, this can be really handy if you're writing at your CSS. Uh, a lot of times. I find it's it's really great. Um, it keeps things really organized. So let's go back to here. We only want this indentation to happen inside of the heading or the header. So in our code, we notice that inside the header is this h1 and this h2, and this one isn't. So if we open this up, we can then copy and paste, or let's cut these out of here and specifically these h tag properties we can have in here and now it's only going to affect those save it refresh and you can see this one doesn't have the stylings that the other one had um, if we want we can pull up my css file and you can see the changes more specifically let's see so you can see here it's rewritten this to be grad pair one anchor um, and then have the CSS. It keeps the tapping, you know, which can be good or bad if you're going to look at it later. I don't know how you write your CSS. I would typically just write mine, you know, all on the same, you know, tab here. However, um, when you start nesting things inside of things inside of things, you know, the the sort of tabbed um, tab layout of your CSS can be sort of useful. You know, it's it's certainly not a bad thing. You can always format. I usually minimize my CSS anyways, so it doesn't really matter what the display of the live CSS document is looking like anyways. 
um, you know, but just if you want to look at it later, that's what it does. And if you'll notice that it didn't actually add anything that's grad pair one um, because it does, there's nothing written here. But, you know, if we wanted to do, um, let's give this a color of, for fun, let's just use the variable from last time, blue, save, refresh. This all has the color of blue now and nothing else does. We'll go back to our CSS and you can see it's now added this pair one CSS. Uh, so, you know, nesting is really simple. It's sort of something that you just do when you're writing at your CSS and you get really used to it. And I find that uh, going back to regular writing, regular CSS just seems really uh, time consuming now after getting so used to this. Uh, so that's pretty much it for nesting. It's a really simple concept, not a whole lot to it, but it, it saves you a lot of time in the long run and makes uh, organizing your CSS file really nice. Um, it's really nice to find things. Uh, there's never really any confusion about you know what belongs to what because everything's sort of nested in and you always know where to look for something. All right, well in the next tutorial we're gonna be talking about mixins, which are sort of like, uh, but they're sort of like variables, but they're a little bit more powerful. Um, you can do a lot more with them and uh, because they encompass a lot more. We'll get into that next time. Um, as always, if you have any questions, you know, leave a comment or email us and uh, you know, subscribe if you like if you want to see more. Um, once again, this is Scott with Love Love Tuts and thanks for watching.